Hi, this is John Bennett for Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure of having Bulang Gao, Professor and Vice Chairman uh, from China, giving his giving his talk. Welcome, Bulang. It's all yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. You see, this is Bulang Gao working at Sierra First Hospital and also in a provincial people's hospital. And my title of the lecture is uh, the mechanism of cerebral aneurysm and treatment modalities on its genesis. This is a hospital overview. Cerebral aneurysm, it's actually local expansion on cerebral arteries. It's very severe. Uh, that may cause death when it's ruptured. So this figure demonstrates uh, the hemodynamics of the MCA aneurysm. For this one is a um, total pressure, shows the total pressure, and this is the washer stress before the aneurysm was virtually removed. And these two figures show that the aneurysm was virtually removed. And this one here, total pressure compared with the before aneurysm was removed here at the top of the bifurcation wall. The total pressure is very high. It is red here, very high. For the shear stress, it's also very high. It is red here at the right as the blood flow impediment. You see, compared with the uh, aneurysm wall, you see that here the total shear stress is very high and total pressure is also very high. So this is the blood flow coming into the aneurysm and also on the uh, bifurcation wall. You see, this is a withdrawal line across the bifurcation wall and it shows the washer stress and also the total pressure profile. We can see that this is a, after the is virtually removed on, right on the bifurcation wall. As the total pressure, as the blood flow impediment here, the total pressure is the greatest, that's the peak. But here, the, the shear stress is the lowest. But as blood flowed towards both branches and the, the shear stress increased very quickly to two peaks. Here you can see the two peaks. At first, we suspect that the energy was initiated at one or two of these peaks. You see, this is another aneurysm at the base of the bifurcation wall. It's, uh, this is a before aneurysm was removed, it's after aneurysm was removed. We can see, you see, after the aneurysm was removed, the bifurcation wall has a very high total pressure compared with before aneurysm was removed, and also high, you see, shear stress compared with the aneurysm wall. Now, this is a flow impediment on the bifurcation wall. We can see blood flow directly impeded here. This is also a withdrawal line across the aneurysm wall. And we can see that on the aneurysm, the shear stress is very low, but the, the, the total pressure is very high. Compared with the after the annual, this is the after the annual was removed. And the, the shear stress, the total pressure very high as a peak here, but the shear stress very low right as the blood flow impediment. We can compare with the, the let, let's say, this here, the total pressure is uh, maintained at uh, 660 PA, but you see, the total pressure very high at 70, 70 PA. So we also suspected that the aneurysm was initiated at the one or two peaks here or here. With here, it corresponds to very high total pressure. Now this figure times the aneurysm. This is the 2004, this is 2008. The aneurysm was initiated, you see here, until 2008, it becomes a typical aneurysm. We removed the aneurysm here and to show the initial state before the aneurysm was initiated. Now, this figure shows that the aneurysm was here, this is before the aneurysm was initiated, this is the blood flow impediment here. Here, as the initial 
development stage, the energy limit was here like, the, like this. Now let's see where is this? It corresponds to peak two. This proves that the energy was initiated at one peak. You see, corresponding to peak two here, right here. And uh, this, this point also corresponds to a very high total pressure here. So this, this case is demonstrated that the energy was initiated by both high pressure and the high total, high total pressure and the high shear stress. This is another case of the of somic segment of the internal carotid artery here as the energy this energy was virtually removed. And you see, after the energy was removed, we can see blood flow directly impeded at here, at the animal side. Here, right here, blood flow directly impeded here. This is another case, also as an ophthalmic segment. You see here the energy, we virtually removed the energy, and this, this case of it demonstrated the energy, the blood flow directly impeded here, this animal side corresponding to here. Now, this figure demonstrated the energy was initiated by the direct flow impeachment. Now, this is a um, the energy warp was just stress and the dynamic pressure and the total pressure. This on the energy wall. Now this is uh, after the energy removed. This, this is the profile of the hemodynamic stresses on the energy wall uh, on the the vessel wall after energy was virtually removed. We can see that the washer stress very high over one PA and the total pressure also very high and the dynamic pressure very high over one PA. Let's compare it with the before, after as the annual was, was developed. You see very low, what should you see below one PA? Dynamic pressure almost at zero. This total pressure at 75 also. So annual formation, this, indicates the annual formation is to decrease the hemodynamic stresses. Now, let's make a, some 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 the hemodynamic feature at annual initiation site. One is direct flow impediment. Second is the high shear stress and the high pressure. These three conditions as a prerequisite condition for annual initiation. Without this, conditions that energy will not be developed. <laughs> now, flow direct impediment can cause high pressure and high shear stress on local wall. And uh, the formation of several energy can decrease the total pressure and the shear stress. So, blood flow direct impediment cause high pressure and high shear, shear stress and leading to MMP, matrix and metal of protease increase. And it, this MMP can, can, can interrupt or can, can dilect or can, you say, can destroy the internal elastic laminar. The internal elastic laminar destruction can cause the wall, decrease the wall strength and the annual formation. Annual formation leads to decrease the pressure and the shear stress. So, when endothelial cells that feel the high shear stress and a high pressure at the curvature of the bifurcation wall, you see it increases the MMP expression and the secretion, and leading to the internal elastic laminar destruction and at last the annual formation. This is an active adaptation process, not a, not a passive adaptation process. It's the endocytial cells that can feel the hemodynamic stresses so as to start an adjustment process and leading to, you see, uh, annual formation. Annual formation is to decrease the hemodynamic, increase the pressure, shear stress. 
So abnormally enhanced the total pressure, abnormally enhanced washer stress, dissolved flow impediment, can cause annual formation. Annual formation is to decrease the abnormally enhanced hemodynamic stresses within a certain field with a logical range. This is an active process. So elastic fiber destruction, this is one pathology characteristic of aneurysm wall. It's caused by increased MMPs, mainly MMP2 and MMP9. A proptosis and a reduced smooth muscle cells. This is the second pathologic characteristic of aneurysm. You see, and the third one is the inflammatory, inf inflammatory cell infiltration. Inflammatory cell infiltration can increase MMP and to further de destruct, de destroy the internal elastic lamina and also to de destroy the, the vessel wall strength. At last, the, the wall will, will expand to form a form typical aneurysm. So, what are the determinant factors for aneurysm formation? At the actual bifurcation angle, this is a very important. A greater angle bifurcation angle will lead to greater hemodynamic stresses at the bifurcation apex to cause more aneurysm to form. You see, for aneurysm bifurcation, like the internal carotid artery bifurcation, middle cerebral artery bifurcation, anterior cerebral artery, and the basal artery bifurcation, with the aneurysm, the bifurcation angle is very significant great, P is less than 0 0.001, but for non aneurysm it's very small. So, most of the aneurysm tended to deviate to, towards the smaller angle formed between the pressure artery and the one branch artery. This also has a significant difference between aneurysm and non aneurysm bifurcation. Now, let's see, this is a but ACAM anterior cerebral artery bifurcation, this is a, this is a bifurcation angle is 173 is it for 148, this is 94. You see the shear stress is greatly decreased, you see, with the bifurcation angle decrease. But the total pressure also decreased, you see, with the bifurcation angle decrease. Now, two stenting in bifurcation, in west, in west, in west bifurcation, it can lead to, you see, decreased bifurcation angle. We put two stents here, one stent here, one stent here, it's a two stent and the bifurcation angle will decrease. Now, this is a, before stenting, west stenting, and this is the total pressure, the shear stress, very high, very wide. But after the West stenting, the bifurcation angle will become very small, and the total pressure the shear will become very small. I will greatly decreased and very narrowed, so that is the stresses will focus on the on the bifurcation apex here, whereas there are there is strong you see collagen band to protect us here. This is actually curving angle. The more the vessel deviates from the original blood flow direction, the greater angle the hemodynamic stress is to uh, induce more aneurysm. Patients with aneurysm, the, the curving angle is very small. But for patients without aneurysm, the curving angle is very great. Let's see. Let me see this one. This is the aneurysm here. This is 116. This is a, this patient has no aneurysm here, but is the angle is 140. You see, we sampled six or seven areas around the animals. This is around the animals here. We sampled here before, after, and the long down. You see, this is what we sampled here around the aneurysm, and. Let's see, as the aneurysm initiation site, all the dynamic pressure, total pressure, wall shear stress, strength rate, and the gradient of uh, wall shear stress and the total pressure, you see, at the aneurysm site, 
all the parameters are significantly greater than the surrounding area. You see, this this indicates that the aneurysm was, was initiated by greater hemodynamic stresses, and annual formation is to decrease the abnormally increased hemodynamic stresses. Actually, diameter and the thickness of the actual wall, most annuals are deviated also towards the smaller artery, very small, you see. This has a significant difference. For actual diameter and wall thickness, for this one, this is an ophthalmic artery, you see the annual was initiated as the root of the ophthalmic artery, you see, this is a different peak, and shear stress and the total pressure. The aneurysm here and here, it shows that the aneurysm was initiated at the small wash shear stress side, small pressure side here is contributing bonding here. This indicated that the artery diameter also plays a role, and the wall thickness also plays a role. Here, as the, annual, the internal carotid artery is very large and the wall is very thick, but here it's, it's not. So even a small, even a small hemodynamic stretch that can induce the aneurysm here to form here. This one is also the, has the same meaning, you see. And here, this is a PCAM, very small, the annual was initiated at the PCAM uh, at the road. Here, very small wash stretch, at a very small total pressure. Why the annual was initiated here rather than here? Because the wall diameter, the, the actual diameter and the wall thickness also play the wall. When it's very thick, it needs a lot of um, hemodynamic stresses and to, to to act for a long time. So direct determinant factors, this direct flow impediment can lead to a send wall at wall destruction to form aneurysm. Let's say this is a stigmatic, you see figure, you see blood flow here, directly impeded here, and this side is very thin, but this side without aneurysm, without the direct flow impediment, it becomes very sick. Yeah. This is, I got it from uh, the actual from uh, carbs, the human carbs. You see, you can see, you see, when you open it, you see, this is very thick here, color body here. But here, very thin, this is blood flow disorder impediment. And uh, actually, diameter is, uh, is color, is. Uh, Positively correlated with the wall thickness. When the artery is very big, the wall is very the wall thickness is very great. So age annually usually occurred on between forty and eighty years. With the increase of age, the vessel wall will become more degenerated with more internal elastic lamina destructed and lost, and decreased strength of wall sex. Females, estrogen can protect the endocytial cell. With decrease of estrogen, the vessel wall will become more easily damaged. So now let's turn to the treatment effects on the hemato uh, on the, um, the effect of the treatment modalities on the you see recurrence of aneurysm. Clipping and endovascular treatment, the coiling, stent assisted coiling, and the covered stent, stenting flow, you see the constructing stent. This figure shows that if we put a bad stent here, blood flow will get, less blood flow will get into the, the, the aneurysm here. You see, just one stent. This is the aneurysm as, um, you see, the ophthalmic segment, the small aneurysm. We just put a neuroform stand here, a neuroform stand here, and the several months later, you see, at the first follow up, the vessel segment becomes straightened, but you see, uh, the aneurysm disappeared. This is just because the blood flow was not, was not directly impeding here after the artery becomes straightened. This is the same one. 
you see this is aneurysm here peripheral is located in pinched here you see we virtually the mover here as the peripheral is located in pinched here this peripheral aneurysm was directly caused by peripheral impingement however uh, after the artery becomes straightened no peripheral is directly impinged here this is the aneurysm side you see the the artery stenting can you see have um, have a great treatment, you see. This is one stand can put a, you see, as a bifurcation like this. And we put one stand here, this lateral angle will become great, but the bifurcation angle will become smaller. Here, like this. The bifurcation angle will become smaller. But after the bifurcation angle becomes smaller, the, the hemodynamic stress will ha also have some change. The float is really impingement zone will move it to towards the other side. Here, one stand here, one stand after one stand was put here. The really impingement here becomes really smaller. And also the total pressure and the shear stress will also become less great, will become smaller and decreased and also become narrowed. So that the more the the hemodynamic stress will focus on the bifurcation work here. Two stents can put here like a Y stent can put a bifurcation. After Y stenting, the bifurcation angle become greatly decreased, the greatly decreased. So after the bifurcation decreased, Angle decreases, the shear stress and the total pressure will also become greatly decreased. So that the vessel wall will not be greatly affected by the hemodynamic stresses. Now, this is a covered stand. A covered stand can be put across the, the annular neck so as to prevent the blood flow from getting inside the annular. Now, this is a dense stand. This is, a, you see, the this is called you see, dense stents. Also, blood, but a vessel reconstruction stent. After the stent will put here, you see less blood will get in, inside the aneurysm. So this is a big aneurysm. We put a pipeline here, and the aneurysm gradually disappeared. This is a this is a a, a great aneurysm treated with the coiling alone, without a stenting, just the coiling, you see? Now, for clipping, clipping, this is one patient, um, MC aneurysm. It's after it was clipped, it recurred eight years later. Now we can see the clip, the clip is still here, but the aneurysm was recurred. Clipping doesn't change the vessel shape, doesn't change the bifurcation angle and the hemodynamic stresses. So greater hemodynamic stresses will still impinge on the bifurcation wall and cause greater damage to the wall and annular formation later. Now we've seen this figure, this is the MCA bifurcation aneurysm. Before aneurysm removed, you see it's, uh, the wall has less, you see, Less you see a uh, total pressure and the smaller you see shear stress compared with the uh, after the animal was virtually removed. After the animal was virtually removed, the, the artery was restored to the state before the animal was, was initiated. We just investigated the, what happened here. You see, it, it shows that the animal, the bifurcation wall has greater hemodynamic stresses shear stress and the total pressure and the annual formation can decrease the shear stress and the total pressure. We can we have seen several cases like this. It's all like this. Now it's also like this. After the annual the clipping clipping just put a clip here to clip the annual without changing the bifurcation angle. As the bifurcation angle was not changed, so the shape, the wash stress, and also total pressure profile are not changed. We can see it's still the same. Now, this is a clipping. Clipping is the profile, the clip, it just clips the annular neck without changing the pressure artery. 
without changing the pituitary artery. If you can change the pituitary artery, make the bifurcation smaller, or make the curve smaller, and then the blood flow will not directly impede as the aneurysm initiation side and will decrease the recurrence rate. So, aneurysm occurred at bending and bifurcation wards and are caused by flow direct impediment. Start struts can interfere with the flow and decrease the flow impediment. Stand resilience can straighten the vessel, change the pressure and shear stress, decrease or eliminate hemodynamic factors for animal formation. Stating aims as the initiation factor that was generalization. So clipping doesn't change the hemodynamic parameter of aneurysm initiation and will cause recurrence or new initiation of aneurysm. After the aneurysm was clipped, a new aneurysm was started at a nearby wall, initiated, developed, enlarged, and ruptured. This process is much longer than the recurrence process after calling for three years, from three years to eight years or even longer. New aneurysm feature is on normal and new by wall, long term and different from the recurrence after coiling. It's recurrence is the reinitiation of the aneurysm. Traditional concept of a clipping believe is that a clipping can occur can cure aneurysm without recognizing that the clipping doesn't change the actual shape and the hemodynamic parameter, which can lead to the initiation of an aneurysm. Therefore, after clipping, the patient will not have any imaging follow-up and the aneurysm will be restarted and developed without any intervention leading to any disruption at the death of patients. Calling without calling doesn't change the, the vessel wall and also has a very high rate of recurrence. Each recurrence is uh, caused by coil compression, leading to enlargement of the residual cavity, different from the study of the aneurysm after the clipping. So in eliminating hemodynamic stress and revising the initiation mechanism, stand assisted calling is better than calling alone or clipping. Stenting with covered stents or dense stents or vessel reconstruction stents is better than stenting alone, calling alone or clipping. So thank you very much. This is my, this end of my lecture. Thank you. Okay. If you have any question, okay. you can contact me. Okay, thank you, Bulan okay. Gao from China. Okay. On behalf of the Neuro IMC 2019 conference, thank you very much. Okay.